So I'm about to show you how you can take this Google map right here and make up to $600 in only three hours. Hi, my name is Austin Godbolt with AustinGodbolt.com. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna take a look at this video and I'm gonna give you my thoughts and opinions. Now, I've seen a lot of people talking about using Google Maps to make money online. I'm gonna interject what I think, if this is realistic for someone that's just getting started and potentially better opportunity. So let's go ahead and watch this video today and I'm gonna tell you what I think um, without a filter. And if you want to be added to this globe, simply reply or comment down below with your city, state, province, country, and I'll get you pinned. So I came across a video where someone said they were able to make $700 in four hours. So you know I had to do a little research, make sure so I looked at this video and I thought about doing an I tried it series with it, but the video I think was broken down into multiple parts. I didn't get a chance to do it. If you guys want me to try an I tried it for the original video, uh, comment down below and we will take a look. Sure, it checks out and it's pretty legit, y'all. So we are going to be- Before we continue, I wanna make a quick announcement. This is my birthday month and as a special offer, special gift to you, I am slashing the prices for all of my products, okay? so what we're doing for the month of july only is everything that i offer is a 50 percent discount i will have links to the products down in the description below but as a way to say happy birthday to me and thank you for all of the views likes comments shares and follows i decided to offer a steep discount so if you are looking at getting started you want to start your affiliate marketing career affiliate marketing business and you want to do it at a very reasonable price check out the links in the description. We're using Google Maps to look at Google business profiles and that's how we are going to be able to get our money. And when we are looking at the Google business profiles on Google Maps, we want to really target small businesses. And what I'm going to ask it is to give examples of different types of small businesses like plumbers. And it's going to break down the many different types of business. At the end of this video, I will provide a faster and much easier way to do this. Um, working with small businesses can be very lucrative. It also can be very time consuming because essentially a small business owner is everything. They're the marketing department, they're the manufacturing, they do all of it, okay? And so usually they don't have time to just answer phone calls and field emails for people that want to want them to spend money. In fact, that's a good bulk of their day. People calling them and stopping in and prospecting to try and get them to buy stuff. And so they, quite frankly, a lot of them, they're, they, they don't have time for this. So I'll, I'll show you a much more efficient way to find these, these groups of people and um, you'll be able to do it for free and it'll save you a lot of time. First and foremost, you want to look for businesses that either do not have a Google business account or they have an incomplete business account. You also want to look for businesses that have low reviews. And what I mean by low reviews is anything under. So this method has been around a pretty long time. Uh, basically what you can do is you're going to find different areas of opportunity, whether it's they don't have a website, they have missing information on their Google My Business. This, this has been around a long time. Hopefully there's a, a new take on it, but people have been talking about doing this for years. In fact, if you watch this video, you'll probably get an ad about how a 14 year old girl, my 14 year old daughter was able to make $3,000 basically doing this method. Hey, that said Alston's Drive. I should probably go get one of those uh, signs made really have a lot going on they don't have a website they don't have hours so these are the type of businesses that you want to pretty much try to find so that's one of them you want to go through and see if you can find any more here's another one that only has two reviews but they do have five stars it's so we keep talking about reviews i'm curious as to how we're going to boost those reviews how, what we're going to do to make money and um why we keep talking about reviews. So I, I'm, I haven't watched this video. I'm completely in the dark. I'm eager to see what's going to happen and how we can make money with this. Google offers a free course that you can take and it's only 42 minutes and it's going to pretty much sum up everything. See, this is the one thing that a lot of people don't realize. People say, well, I don't know how to do this. I don't have skills to do that. A lot of this stuff can be found through Google, quite honestly, uh, and YouTube. If you want to learn how to build a website, if you want to learn how to use Google My Business and become proficient in certain things, you basically just have to do the work, go do a little bit of research and uh, apply the skills. That's, that, that's really the two things that you need to be successful online. You need to go out and find in, and learn different skills and then apply the skills. And this is something literally anybody can do. A lot of people choose not to and a lot of people just choose to complain 
and say it, making money online doesn't work. But it, it does work if you do those two things. But if you are not comfortable with calling people, another way that you can do this that is also pretty good, you can email these companies. But keep in mind when you are doing this. So one thing that you have to realize is this is gonna be active income. You're only going to get paid if you're actively working out there. And so this is gonna be very time intensive. And when I first got started trying to make money online, I actually built five page WordPress websites and it was calling people, it was dropping in, it was sending them emails and scheduling meetings. This is something that can definitely work and definitely happen, but you're gonna to have to get out of your comfort, comfort zone in order to be successful with this. Like I said, when I first got started, I was building out five page WordPress websites and I could make anywhere between 300 and $3,000 per website. And you have to call, you have to prospect, you have to ask questions and you kind of have to, uh, you have to be a salesman and, and this can work. This could work for literally anybody if you're willing to get out of your comfort zone. Now, sending out emails might not work the best. It's definitely going to be better if you call or if you walk in, but you know, these guys get emails. I would say probably depending on where they live, at least 10 to hundreds of emails every single day with people trying to gain their business or earn their business. So just be aware of that. Uh, your conversion rate's gonna be low. It's gonna be maybe 1%, maybe 5% if you're a, a smooth talker, if you have a good sense on the phone, but just know it's gonna take some calls. You're gonna need a lot of calls in order to start seeing some conversions. We are going to head back over to ChatGPT. They are going to be writing an entire sales pitch for us so that we don't have to do too much. Now, this is going to be key. If ChatGPT can put together a good coherent sales script, it can make your life a little bit easier. However, when you get on the phone with a human, the human may, may not be able to uh, easily follow this script. And so that's another thing that you've got to be aware of. And, and really, the the biggest downside to ChatGPT is it can't adopt for human um, input or human thoughts. And, and so you're going to have to be able to adapt and think quickly on your feet. Um, and it's going to take practice. Your first sales call is not going to go well. Your 10th sales call may not go well. If you have a sales background, it can be easier for you. But, you know, one of the things that can happen, I know that happened with me, is you didn't want to come off as being an inconvenience. And so people can sense that and then they're just gonna try and rush you off the phone. You have to have the right mindset when you're making phone calls. Hey, I'm here to help you, you need this, I'm here to grow your business. And if you frame things the right way, you can be successful with this. But again, know that the conversion is gonna be insanely low. You're gonna probably looking at, uh, if you're lucky, if you're great, if you get, um, if you've got some experience, at most 10%, but you're probably looking at somewhere between one and 5% with your conversions of making phone calls. And then from your conversions of making phone calls, you still have to get the person to say yes. So you're going to be looking at a very low conversion in the beginning. If you are consistent, if you are persistent and determined to be successful with this, you can be very successful with this. But just know that it's not going to be, hey, I make one phone call, I get one sale. I make five phone calls, I get five sales. It's going to take a little while, especially if you're not good on the phone. I am going to say I have a business where I am helping small businesses. I okay, so let's look at this prompt. Um, one thing that you have to do is you you always have to calibrate ChatGPT. And so the best way that I found to calibrate ChatGPT is to write act as an expert in. And so if you add that to the front, it usually gives you different results. Maybe act as an expert in you know, uh, phone marketing, act as an expert as uh, uh, phone sales, connecting with small businesses, that might give you better results. But this isn't, this isn't a bad prompt. I'd be interested to see what, what comes out from it. But this is a good prompt to get started. And just like that, it gave us this sales pitch, but as I read through it, it kind of seems too sales pitchy. Like, I don't feel like there's really a connection here. My name is Blank. I'm the founder of Blank. We spe yeah, so if we look at this, this is not a good sales pitch. I used to work at a, a for-profit university where I made a 100 phone calls per day. And so if I wanted to not talk to anybody, I would say, hi, my name's Alston with the name of the company. That's a great way to get people off the phone because what happens is, is if someone answers a phone that they don't, a phone call that they don't recognize a the number, they have their guard up. They think that they're either going to be scammed or attempt to be scammed or they're someone's trying to sell them something. And so 
what you have to do or, and what I did to get the most success. Now, again, my success was like 5%, 10% at most was, hey, is Frank there? Yeah, this is Frank. Hey, hey Frank, it's Alston. And that way gets their guard down just a little bit. And then that's when you kind of kind of go into your spiel. But saying my name is Alston and I'm the founder of blank, guard goes all the way up. They're going to say not interested. They're going to say add me to your do not call list. I know that when people call me and I get a bunch of calls every single day where people are trying to sell me something, I just say do not call list. But I found what had the most success was saying, hey, it's Alston. How are you? Or hey, what's up? It's Alston. That way, you sound like a friend and you can get another 10 seconds on the phone. That was the best way to actually have people hear what I was trying to say before they would hang up or say do not call list or say some expletive. So one thing I'm going to do is ask ChatGPT, can you make it less sales pitchy and more of a connection? And just like that, it changed the entire feel of it. As a fellow small business owner, I know how crucial it is. This is Alston. I hope you're having a great day. I'm calling because I've been exploring their business sector in your local area and I was really impressed by what you created with your business. So this could work a little bit better because you are starting off with um, you're starting off with praise. You're telling them how great of a job that they're doing. And one thing that you've got to understand, and I get these emails all the time, is people will tell me everything that I'm doing wrong. I don't want to buy from you if you're telling me all of the stuff that I'm doing wrong. You tell me I'm doing great stuff, I'm going to keep reading. But I think this is actually a little bit better. That's why you always have to cal calibrate ChatGPT and ask it more questions. We'd have to keep reading to see if this would work out a little bit better. But like I said, you want to say, hey, what's up? This is Alston. How's it going? Or, hey, this is Alston. Uh, good to hear from you again. And they might be thinking again, when did we talk before? But you're going to have to play with the words a little bit, be a little bit tricky in order to keep your foot in the door long enough for them to hear your second and third sentence. The only thing that I'm concerned about with, this is a long, hopefully this isn't the opening, opening salvo, the opening shot, because people are going to tune out. Small business owners are, are working 17, 18 hours per day in some cases, and they're already thinking about the 10 other things that they need to do and how they can get you off the phone as quickly as possible. So hopefully, you know, this is, you, you fire off a sentence to them or a paragraph to them, they say something back, and then, you know, that's when you kind of go into this other stuff. The other thing too is you don't want to sound like you're reading it. You might want to practice this 10 times before you hop on the phone, make it feel natural, have the pauses after your sentences and where they need to be. But um, hopefully, hopefully with some practice, this would actually come out feeling natural. But after you have your account, once you start to get some hits, especially through the email and someone becomes interested, you can send them that link to your Fiverr account or your Upwork account and then they can make the payment through there. And that's something that's more trusted because as you're building your business, you know, people may not feel comfortable just paying you and they're like, I'm not sending you any money, but they can trust their payment through these sites more than just sending it to you. And it feels more like a business, especially rather than just saying, can you cash out? So she's actually not talking about service arbitrage. She's talking about having a Fiverr account. I don't recommend that simply because Fiverr is going to take some unnecessary fees from you. Um, a better way to go would be to create like a Stripe account, for example. A Stripe account is 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 a way that you can collect payments if for whatever reason they could do PayPal and you can send them a PayPal invoice. That's going to be much better than doing, than doing uh, Fiverr because simply Fiverr is going to take some money PayPal may take some money. And um, it, the, the other side to that is if you are, let's say you're, you're helping people with Google My Business and you start getting clients through offline, that's going to help boost your rankings on Fiverr. Now, if you're looking to make a complete business out of that, that can work. But I don't like the fees that are going to be taken from you. So if you did something for 250 I think Fiverr is going to take, I don't know, at most two, three, four percent. And so you're going to lose out on some money, maybe $12 or so. And then five and then PayPal fee. So PayPal fee. So then just use PayPal and send them an invoice or create a Stripe account and send them an invoice. Both of those are free to start. You only need two sales. Now, don't that sound realistic? Just convince two people to purchase your service. And with the help of ChatGPT, it can in order to convince two people, you probably may need to make about 200 phone calls per day. Now, again, your numbers may vary. I'm just telling you from my personal experience, when I did this selling five page WordPress websites, it's just hard to get people on the phone. It's hard to keep people on the phone 
and then moving on to the next step, which might be scheduling an appointment. Know that you you probably have to make about 200 phone calls per day. All right, so at the beginning of this video, I talked about a potentially faster and easier way in order to find clients. This is the exact process that I use to help me find clients for my WordPress business. I'd build five page WordPress websites and I'd make anywhere between 300 and $3,000. When I first got started, I charged $300 because I wasn't confident in my ability to charge more, but then I slowly increased my price and people kept saying yes. So start off low if you don't have the confidence, but then keep increasing the price until people say that's too much. With bigger cities, $3,000 is a drop in the bucket. If you're trying to target a tiny city like Topeka, Kansas, no offense to, to my people in Topeka, but if you're, charge, if you're trying to target people in Topeka, know that their cost of living is lower. And so what they expect to pay for things is also gonna be lower. So let me show you how to find um, clients much faster and essentially easier. So the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna to go to your local public library and get a library card. It's free. The next thing that you wanna do is you want to go over to their online services. Um, here it's called Digital Library, but what we're looking for is I believe research and it used to be called data exile now i think it's called like exile elite it used to be called reference usa that's what it was all right so here we go it's now called reference solutions it's gone through a few different name changes but we finally found it so what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to enter in your library card number look away while i enter in my library card number from here you can access any u.s business and i'm going to show you how to do that so we're going to click on u.s businesses we are going to go over to advanced search and here we are simply going to sort businesses by their location. And this is a much easier way to find businesses. And then actually from here, we can sort by industry. So for example, we can come down to, we could do a radius, we could do zip code, we can do city, but I'm going to do county. All right. And so in Illinois, Chicago is in Cook County. So I'm going to go to Cook County, but you can actually select all of these if you wanted to. If we go to Cook County like this, and then we are going to click view results. And now we have a list of every business in Chicago, except for this one. This one's in Tempe, Arizona, which is weird. Um, from here, we can actually do a few different things. If we look at charts, if we look at charts, we can actually sort by industry. In the beginning of that video, she talked about finding different industries. But what we can do here is we can actually sort by industries. If we wanted to find plumbers or physicians, we can do that. So let's say we wanted to do, um, let's say we wanted to do the NAISCS code. I don't even know what that means, but you can see that we can find different industries much easier. Beauty salon. So let's target every beauty salon in Chicago. So we're going to click on this. And now we have a list of every beauty salon in Chicago, but it actually gets better. What we're going to do is we are going to download this information. One of the drawbacks with this is that you can only download 25 at a time. So you're going to have a bunch of Excel spreadsheets, but that's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to download this information. We are going to click on detailed, and then we are going to click on download records. Now this is where the magic happens. This is where we can actually potentially make a good amount of money. All right, so now that we have that, we're just gonna open it up and I'm going to show you all of the different opportunities that we have to make money. So we have the name of the business. We know who owns the business. If they're male or female, we know the address. So if we want to send them a mailer, we could, but it gets better. What we can do is we can also call them as you can see, but more importantly, what I liked is that I could see their website. All of these blanks here mean that they don't have a website listed or they might have a bad website. So let's click on this one like this. Just gonna highlight it. Then I'm gonna open this up, paste this oh, paste this in like this, hit enter. Now we can take a look. If this is a bad outdated website, we could actually reach out to them. So this is a good website. Um, there doesn't appear to be a way to make money from them. We can just sim simply go through and do this again and again and again. But the reason why I like this is simply we don't have to spend as much time looking for stuff. It's going to come to us. Now, look at this. This is a terrible website. What I would do is I'd reach out to this person and say, hey, your website's bad. You're losing customers. Now, obviously, I'm not going to say it like this, but I'm going to say, hey, I see an opportunity to grow your business. Right now, your competitors have very good websites 
and I think it's costing you money. What I can do is I can actually put together a, a better website for you to help you make more money. Just scroll through. You could say the image background doesn't look good. These images look great, but the image background doesn't look good. And I can build you a better website. The one thing that I did to help me get more clients was to actually build out a website for them. And to build it out, I went over to a website called ThemeForce and I got a domain, I got a website, and I built out a website for them. In my example, I actually built out church website and I built out a restaurant website. And so when I went to speak to people, I could say, this is what you're going to get. It's gonna look a little bit different with your colors and stuff, but this is what you're gonna get. And so if we're doing a beauty salon, we could type in beauty salon, and now we can find and download a WordPress theme, put that WordPress theme into our domain that we just got, and now we can make even more money. So if we look at this, this is a much, I think a much, more efficient way to do it. If we look at our data, we can see, I think this is a better, much better way. In addition, you can also see their social media account. So if they don't have social media set up, that could be another value added service that you add. But this is a very simple way to go and this is all done for free. You can see how much money they make, how much money they spend, um, a lot of information when they're open so you're not calling or emailing when they're not available. Lots of information all available for free and you can even reach out to them via Facebook. So this is a much better way, I think, than kind of surveying and scrolling through. It helps with efficiency. If you want me to do a full in-depth video about starting a WordPress business, let me know, comment down below, and I'll put together a separate video, but I think this is a much better way to go. Watch this video next because YouTube says it will help you grow your online business.